so till now we have seen sliding window protocol okay uh, one thing is sliding window protocol is a theoretical concept in the sense hmm, we when we are talking about sliding window protocol in order to increase the efficiency of stop and wait uh, we didn't say we are talking about what should be the size of sender window which is 1 plus 2a but then we didn't talk about what should be the size of receiver window the reason is we are not worried about receiver at all it is just a theoretical concept now let's talk about what should be the size of the sender as well as what should be size of receiver and uh, they all in they are all practical protocols so threading window protocol is a theoretical concept and practically it is implemented in two ways okay see what is the reason to go for sliding window protocol to implement pipelining why pipelining because stop and wait efficiency is less so because stop and wait efficiency is less we are going for sliding window protocol and uh, sliding window protocol is a theoretical concept and now we are practically implementing it in terms of uh, two protocols one is gbn which is go back n g for go and then b for back and n okay so go back n is a practical protocol one of the practical protocols which is implementing sliding window protocol and other one is sr so sr is selective repeat selective repeat okay so go back n and sr we have these two protocols in order to talk about these two protocols i'll take i'll explain you these two in terms of three points okay if you are if you are writing it down then keep in mind that i'll teach three points about uh, go back n and then i'll teach three points about uh, sr okay and in each point i'll explain you the features of these protocols and i'll tell you why this name go back n and why this name sr and finally after doing this we shall compare uh, stop and wait go back n and sr in terms of many parameters okay so now let's talk about go back n first let's talk about go back n i said there are three points right so first point is sender window size so sender window size in go back n is n itself which means if i say uh, the protocol is go back 10 gb 10 then the sender window size is 10 so one more thing the sender window size should always be greater than 1 the reason is if the sender window size is 1 it is simply nothing but stop and wait so if we have to have pipelining as sliding window protocol then uh, always n should be greater than 1 so one thing you should remember is in go back n n should always be greater than 1 if n is equal to 1 you know there is no meaning it is simply stop and wait and second thing is in case if it is go back 10 or go back 100 whatever this number is that is also that is something so that is sometimes called as uh, sender window size which means in go back 10 the sender window size is 10 so let's take a problem here let us say the problem the parameters given are like this See, I am directly giving you the parameters. You can you can write them down. So, if T T equal to one millisecond, and if uh, propagation delay equal to, uh, let's say, forty nine point five milliseconds, then what is the efficiency in case of go back ten? Okay, that is the question given. So, these are all the parameters. So, parameters are. T T equal to this much, T P equal to this much. Efficiency you have to find out in case of go back 10. So what do you understand from it is you already know that go back n is a sliding window protocol. Now how much is the maximum sender window I could send? So if in case of sliding window protocol, given this T T and T P, how much can I send maximum? I could send a maximum of uh, 1 plus 2a packets. right so given these two parameters that number turns out to be 100 packets which means i could send 100 packets and now it is saying that go back 10 which means according to this question the actual number of packets sent in one window is 10 right therefore efficiency is 
actually i could have sent 100 packets but i am sending only 10 packets therefore efficiency is 10 percent that is how you should calculate the efficiency right so if you have to increase you know why why are they sending only 10 packets is that is what they decided upon so it has nothing to do with uh, these two so using tt and tp you can find out the capacity of the channel channel is saying that you can send 100 packets i can hold all the 100 packets but then efficiency you know we are sending only 10 packets that is why it is 10 percent now given this efficiency maybe they will even ask you extend the question like this if bandwidth is bandwidth is given as uh, let's say 40 mbps then what is throughput throughput is equal to how much you know that throughput is always efficiency into bandwidth right so either they could ask you effective bandwidth or bandwidth utilization or throughput both all are same then what is efficiency efficiency is 10 percent 10 percent into bandwidth is 40 mbps right therefore you are supposed to get 4 mbps so 4 mbps is the throughput which means even though you could you are given 40 mbps you are not using the channel at the full capacity that is why you are effectively using only 4 mbps so you know the data rate possible for you is 4 mbps this is about first point first point is sender window size is n in go back and sender window size is n now let's see the second point now in go back and point number two point number two is receiver window size receiver window size is always one okay so till now we didn't talk about receiver at all but it is first time we are talking about receiver window size now coming to go back and now why should the receiver window size be always one is i'll tell you the reason let us say uh, just for the sake of example I am taking an example where sender window size is uh, 4 which means uh, let us assume that it is go back 4 GB4 which means sender window size is 4 and the receiver window size is 1. Now let us see what happens with these two. So sender window size is 4 therefore I will be sending 4 packets 0, 1, 2, 3 and the receiver window size is 1 which means receiver will always be waiting for only one packet okay so i'll be sending the packets one by one say 0 1 2 3 or in my window so i'll be sending the packet number 0 and packet number 1 and packet number 2 and packet number 3 okay and don't worry about the sequence numbers now how many sequence numbers are available for now you understand that there are lots of sequence numbers available hmm? and now packet number 0 it will be waiting for packet number 0 initially and it received it and again you know it will after receiving it it will acknowledge and it will wait for packet number 1 and it will receive it packet number 1 is received and now it will send the acknowledgement like this so uh, and uh, next it will be waiting for packet number 2 ok so what happens at the receiver side is sender side is it has sent packet number 0 it got the acknowledgement which means it will send the packet number 4 which means at this point it is going to send packet number 4 and uh, now it has received the acknowledgement for packet number 1 therefore it will send the packet number 5 so packet number 5 is being transmitted so what are the packets that are under transmission 2, 3, 4, 5 are the packets that are being transmitted. Now what is the, uh, see 2, 3, 4, 5 we have sent but we didn't get acknowledgement yet. Now what is the uh, packet number that uh, receiver is expecting? Packet number 2. Now for every packet there will be something called as timeout timer, right? Timeout timer for 0, timeout timer for 1, timeout timer for 2 timeout timer for 3 if we don't get any acknowledgement you know till this timeout timers we are going to retransmit the packets okay huh. now let us say at this point packet number 2 is lost packet number 2 is lost then what happens at the receiver side is 
packet number two, 2 it is waiting for but it didn't receive it now it got packet number 3 so even though it receives packet number 3 it says that i am waiting for packet number 2 and it will discard it which means even if you are getting out of order packets in order packet is 2 out of order packet is 3 even though we are receiving packets you know we are going to discard it saying that i am not waiting for it which means it is even though i get packet number 4 the receiver will discard it even though packet number 5 is received receiver discard it so what is happening is since the receiver window size is 1 it is always going to wait for only one packet and in case if you don't get that packet even if you get the packets after that packet all of them will be discarded continuously right then what happens at the sender side if one packet is lost then there will be a timeout for that pack packet which means see we got the acknowledgement for 0 and we got the acknowledgement for 1 but then till this time we didn't get the acknowledgement for 2 so at this point at this point what will sender th you know sender think is packet number 2 is lost because of which all the subsequent packets might have been discarded it is important see what happened packet number 2 is lost and receiver is waiting for packet number 2 but then we have sent 3 4 5 all the packets are received but the receiver strictly discarded it they it, you know it directly discarded it then what happened at the sender side at the sender side there is a timeout for packet number 2 now what will sender understand sender will understand that oh packet number 2 has been discarded or it has it is lost because of which sender might have you know receiver might have even uh, discarded all the subsequent packets therefore sender will again retransmit packet number 2 as well as all the subsequent packets without getting the timeouts at all which means actually third packet has to be seen here but then before that only it is going to retransmit 2 3 4 5 understand this one packet is lost because of which all the subsequent packets are discarded by this receiver and at the sender side there is a timeout for first packet which is lost and sender will understand that all the subsequent packets would be definitely discarded and therefore sender is going to retransmit the entire window going back n which means from wherever a packet is lost which means see from sorry whatever packet was lost transmitted the latest packet which means 5 it is going to go back n and it is going to retransmit all the four packets that is why it is called go back n right in this case it is go back port the reason is if one packet is lost all the packets will be discarded by the receiver and if there is a timeout at the sender side it will understand that all the subsequent packets might have been discarded therefore without even waiting for the timeouts of the subsequent packets from whatever is the lost sent packet we are going to go back for and retransmit everything which means if there is a timeout at any point we are not sending one packet we are go back in we are going back in and we are sending all the packets from the uh, from that point which means from 2 i'll send 2 3 4 5 that is why it is called go back in right so so one thing you should understand is go back in is not actually going back in from the lost packet lost 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 not lost see now i have sent i'll even i'll show you with an example i'll send 0 1 2 uh, 3 4 5 0 and 1 are acknowledged and 2 3 4 5 are being transmitted and now there is a time out for packet number 2 which means that packet number 2 is lost go back and doesn't mean that you have to go back from the lost packet you need not go back from the lost packet you have to go back from the last packet which is being transmitted which means from 5 we have to go back n that is the meaning of go back n you will get confused between these two go back n is not from the point of uh, you know loss go back n is from the last point okay so i'll take uh, one more example and i'll make this point very clear for you hmm? Uh, this is the most important question using this you will understand how go back and works <coughs> see this question in go back 3 3 means sender window size is 3 if every fifth packet that is being transmitted is lost which means out of every packet you send fifth packet is definitely lost okay and if we have to send 10 packets which means we are sending a total of 10 packets 
then how many transmissions are required so in order to send 10 packets continuously out of these 10 packets every fifth packet is getting lost then if i use go back n with a sender window size of 3 then how many packets will be transmitted in total so one thing you should note is whenever in stop and wait if one packet is lost only that packet will be repeated but but because of the point number 2 in go back n which is receiver window size is 1 whenever one packet is lost we are actually sending along with that you know whenever one packet is lost we are actually sending for that packet the entire window that is the main difference since we are sending the entire window number of retransmissions in go back n are very high compared to stop and wait or sr so i'll just see, show you with, the, with this example so you could solve this example in many ways one thing is you could dry, draw the timeline and you could solve it but then it is going to be very uh, hectic so let's see a simpler method simpler method is they are already saying that they are trying to send 10 packets so let me write all the 10 packets 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 packets yes now they are also saying that uh, let me write them closely 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 packets. And uh, these 10 packets have to be sent using go back 3. Okay. And they are saying that every fifth packet is lost, which means if I am sending all these packets, the first loss will be packet number 5. This is where the first loss is happening. So since it is go back 3, sender window size will contain 3 packets first. Okay. And now this uh, sender window will slowly slide. Why? Because go back and is a sliding window protocol. So once I get the acknowledgement for one, this will slide. And once I get the acknowledgement for two, this will slide. And once I get acknowledgement for three, this will slide. Right? So now I am here. In the window, I got acknowledgement still fourth packet. Therefore, in the current window, there are 5, 6, 7 packets. At this point, packet number 5 is lost. So, when packet number 5 is lost, you are going to retransmit all the packets from the last packet. So, what is the last packet? 7. So, whenever there is a packet loss at the, sender side, at the receiver side, at the sender side, there is a timeout. And whenever there is a timeout, the sender will uh, retransmit the entire window, which means this entire window will be retransmitted again. So what is this window? 5, 6, 7. This entire window will be completely retransmitted again. Right? And uh, again we have 8, 9, 10 packets. Right? So first, first loss is this and further retransmissions are 5, 6, 7. We are not just retransmitting only 5. According to go back and we have to retransmit the entire window. That is the important difference. Okay? And now they are saying that every fifth packet that is being transmitted is lost. So don't care whether 6 and 7 are you know accepted or rejected but 6 and 7 are actually transmitted therefore you should not worry that I uh, you know since 6 and 7 are discarded you should not count them you should even count them so I had again start counting from 6 1 2 3 4 5 therefore next packet loss is at 7 okay so now by the time the seventh packet is lost what will be present inside the window is 789 okay now 789 are present in the window and seventh packet is lost so you are supposed to retransmit 789 reason is simple it is go back and from the last packet we are going to go back three or we are going to retransmit the entire window which is present so again you count from here 1 2 3 4 5 next packet loss is 9 so what is remaining 10 by the time i reach this packet loss inside the window the packets will be 9 and 10 which means from 10 you should not go back 3 you should only go back till the end of the window always the entire window will be retransmitted which means 9 and 10 will be retransmitted so next packet loss will be 1 2 there are only 3 packets therefore no packet loss now in order to send 10 packets, here we are sending more than 10 packets. I think we are sending 18 packets. You could count them later. 
So this is how we could solve this question. So one thing you should note is, since the receiver window size is 1, receiver will never accept out of order packets, which means if one packet is lost, and even though the subsequent packets are received, all those packets will be discarded. If packet number 5 is lost, even though 6 and 7 are received, they will be discarded, which means receiver will never accept out of order packets. Because of this reason, because of this reason, we are retransmitting the entire window. Therefore, in go back end, one timeout will lead to entire window retransmission. Even if there is one timeout at the sender side, it will retransmit the entire window. It will not just retransmit one packet. Right. So let's just you know change the question a bit and again solve it for one more one more thing. For this for this question, the answer is 18. We shall practice with one more question here. Now I'll just change the question a bit. In go back four, if every sixth packet is being trans no transmitted is lost, which means let us say I'm sending four, you know, sender window size is four and uh, out of which in the previous question every fifth packet was lost but now every sixth packet is lost and now i want to send 10 packets if i want to send 10 packets and i'm using go back four out of which every sixth packet is lost then what is the uh, question so see this i'm sending 10 packets so one two three four five six seven eight nine ten packets and out of which every sixth packet is lost and the Sender window size is 4. So first loss is at this point 6 packet and the sender window size is 4 which means here. Okay. So sender window size is 4 and the 6 packet is being lost. So now see what happens. I'll First we will get the acknowledgement for 1 then the window will slide like this. Then we get the acknowledgement for 2 then the window will slide like this. So on we are going to go to a point where the window size window is going to cover 6 7 8 9 now at this point there will be a timeout for packet number 6 so you know that whenever there is a timeout we are going to retransmit the entire window what is the entire window now 6 7 8 9 you should not go back from 6 you should actually send the entire window or you should go back from the last packet that is being transmitted which means from 9 you have to go back or you have to retransmit the entire window which is 6 7 8 9 so I am going to retransmit 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 and now again every 6 packet is lost. 6 packet means you have to count from here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So 6 packet is lost right and by the time I reach here the window is going to contain 8, 9, 10 packets okay. So now at this point again I have to retransmit the entire window which is nothing but 8, 9, 10. So if you count from here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, there is no 6 packet, therefore everything will be successfully sent. So just observe this, when packet number 6 is lost, the packets inside the window are 6, 7, 8, 9 and only they will be retransmitted. And when packet number 8 is lost, the packets inside the window are 8, 9, 10, only they will be retransmitted. Okay. So this is how uh, the total number of packets can be cal calculated. If you count them. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Therefore, the answer is 17. What you could do is, as an interesting exercise, you can keep changing these numbers. You can say it is go back uh, 5 and every 7th packet is lost and you could solve more examples on this. Okay. So, we have covered two points in go back end. Now, let's see the third point in go back end. Let's see the third point. Third point is about acknowledgements. Okay, so any flow control mechanism entirely depends on acknowledgement, which means depending on what the receiver is saying, sender is going to follow that, right? So this is this is always true. So uh, whenever we have sent any packets, we are supposed to get the acknowledgements. Otherwise, you know, we are going to stop. Mm, so see this. There are two kinds of acknowledgements. So if I send many packets, let us say I am sending 4 packets, 1, 2, 3, 4 and if I get the acknowledgement 5 with a number 5 okay. and if this acknowledgement is going to acknowledge the, recip the recipient of uh, you know 1, 2, 3, 4 packets then this acknowledgement is called cumulative acknowledgement. In case if every packet is going to get 
acknowledgements independently which means if you are sending packets 1 2 3 4 and if the acknowledgements are for the packet number 1 acknowledgement number 2 for packet number 2 acknowledgement number 3 for packet number 3 acknowledgement number 4 and for packet number 4 acknowledgement number 5 so if for every packet if you are getting independent acknowledgements this is called independent acknowledgement and if all the packets if i get one single acknowledgement then it is called cumulative acknowledgement therefore acknowledgements are of basically two types one is independent and other is cumulative right and now what is the advantage of independent and what is the advantage of cumulative is this is cumulative acknowledgements okay cumulative acknowledgement and independent acknowledgements so in general we have these two types let me say about the advantage of cumulative acknowledgement for many packets i am sending just one acknowledgement therefore in cumulative acknowledgement traffic is less less traffic is the advantage then what is the disadvantage of cumulative acknowledgement disadvantage of cumulative acknowledgement is if one this particular acknowledgement is lost it actually means that all the packets are lost right so even if one acknowledgement is lost we are going to lose the entire you know it, it means that all the packets are lost which means reliability is less less reliable okay less traffic and less reliable coming to this independent acknowledgements independent acknowledgements advantage is if one packet one acknowledgement is lost it doesn't mean that all the packets are lost it means that only one packet is lost therefore it is reliability is high so reliability in independent acknowledgement is high disadvantage is obviously if you are sending four packets we are expecting four acknowledgements right therefore disadvantage is traffic is high okay so you should understand these two points in general we have two kinds of acknowledgements cumulative and independent right and now coming to this uh, protocol of go back and go back and uses cumulative acknowledgements cumulative acknowledgement means for many packets uh, we send one acknowledgement now when i say for many packets we send one acknowledgement how many is that many which means In go back in, let us say I am sending 4 packets 1, 2, 3, 4. For all the packets, there will be timeout timers. Right? Let us say this is packet number 0, packet number 1, packet number 2, packet number 3. And for all the packets, there will be timeout timers. This is timeout timer for 0, timeout timer for 1, timeout timer for 2, and timeout timer for 3 for all the packets we have uh, timeout timers and now for all these pack i am saying that we are following something called as cumulative acknowledgement cumulative acknowledgement means for many packets i will be sending one acknowledgement now we know you could ask how many is many so is it for one window if you say that if you know if the window size if it is go back four right you could say that for four packets we could send one acknowledgement but but it is not always true that we send a you know if the, if the window size is 4 we are sending the full window size uh, the reason is maybe you know in the last uh, last time example we have seen that the last window contains either one or two or three packets also and sometimes even though our you know window size is 4 i might want to send only one packet then what happens if you are waiting for four packets at the receiver side to send the acknowledgement you might never get the three packets you might get only one packet because i sent only one packet so instead of making the acknowledgement depend on the number of packets i should use some other method using which i can send a cumulative acknowledgement the best method is to have a timer so this time this side these timers are called timeout timers at the receiver side we have something called as acknowledgement timer whenever the receiver receives any packet it is going to start a timer called acknowledgement timer which is fixed in size acknowledgement timer and now whenever the acknowledgement timer starts and expires by the time it expires how many ever packets i receive in that gap i am going to send one acknowledgement for that okay that is how cumulative acknowledgements are implemented in 
go back in so what is that we are doing we are having a timer and we are going to start a timer whenever we receive a packet and by the time the timer expires whatever how many ever packets i received within this gap for all the packets i'll be sending one single acknowledgement right that is how it is implemented and now again next timer this this single acknowledgement is going to be the acknowledgement for 0 and 1 which means here i am going to write acknowledgement number 2 so always acknowledgement number will be 1 plus whatever packets we received since we are received packets number 0 to 1 the next acknowledgement will be 1 plus 1 which is 2 so if we have received the packets number till n then the next acknowledgement number will be n plus 1 it means we are expecting n plus 1 packet from the other side right and now after this is sent for the next packet see whenever you receive the next packet again the acknowledgement timer will be starting acknowledgement timer will not start from the expiry of the acknowledgement timer previous acknowledgement timer whenever you receive any packet we are going to start the acknowledgement timer and by the time it expires we are going to send the acknowledgement for all the packets that we received within this gap so which means for two and three packets we are going to send one acknowledgement and the acknowledgement number will be four right so what you should understand is for many packets we can send one acknowledgement but then how many packets that depends on the acknowledgement timer now if the acknowledgement timer is too big which means if you wait for a long time obviously one benefit is for many packets we could send only one acknowledgement but the drawback of having two big acknowledgement timers is the other side there will be a timeout therefore acknowledgement timer should not be too large because other side there will be a timeout or it should not be too small what happens if the acknowledgement timer is too small what happens if it is no very small is for every packet we will be getting one acknowledgement which means if acknowledgement timer is equal to zero what it means that we are not waiting for any time as and when we receive a packet we are sending a acknowledgement so depending on the acknowledgement timer the length of it we could uh, actually set up uh, how many packets we are actually acknowledging at one time that all depends in the practical implementations so one thing you could you know clearly say is timeout timer should be timeout timer should be very you know larger than greater than acknowledgement timer otherwise what happens is if you are not waiting long enough you know there will be a timeout on the other side and moreover acknowledgement timer should not be too small and acknowledgement timer should not be too large so this is how acknowledgements are implemented in go backend we shall see some some more issues in this uh, let's see the relationship between window sizes and sequence numbers in case of go backend so you know that in go backend uh, n represents the sender window size and always receiver window size is 1 and we have already already seen that in any sliding window protocol the number of sequence numbers required is equal to the window size so let's talk about go back 4 so in go back 4 sender window size is 4 isn't it so let's say our sender window size is 4 then how many sequence numbers do i need at least so let us assume that our sender window size is 4 and receiver window size is 1 okay 4 and 1 and now let us assume that how many minimum sequence numbers do we need we need at least four sequence numbers otherwise there will be repetition within the same window that should never happen so first thing is we need at least four so let us say let us you know let us see what happens if the sequence numbers is four which means i have sequence numbers of zero one two three so i am sending four packets with sequence number zero one two three and at the receiver side receiver is waiting initially for sequence number 0 right so what happens is let us say i am sending 0 1 2 3 and all the packets are received in order which means 0 is received and then it is waiting for 1 1 is received and then it is waiting for 2 2 is received and then it is waiting for 3 3 is received and all the packets have been received and all of them have been acknowledged either cumulative acknowledgement or independent acknowledgement they have been acknowledged and now all the acknowledgements are on the way back and let us assume that they are lost one or more acknowledgements that depends on the acknowledgement timer now if all the acknowledgements are lost what happens on the sender side is 
sender will think that whenever there is a timeout for packet number 0 sender will think that packet number 0 is lost because of which all the other packets might have been discarded by the receiver and therefore sender will try to retransmit all the packets starting from 0 0 1 2 3 so at this point at the timeout timer for 0 see there are timeout timers for 1 2 3 also but they are not relevant for this question that is why i am not showing you now what happens according to the sender is sender will be retransmitting all the previous packets which have already been sent according to the sender they are lost which means sender is going to send 0 1 2 3 packets and at the receiver receiver has already received 0 1 2 3 packets and receiver is waiting for the next set of 0 receiver is waiting for 0 but which 0 the next set why is it again waiting for 0 why not 4 because the number of sequence numbers available is only 4 i can use only number 0 1 2 3 that is what we fixed up the number of sequence numbers we already fixed up and the window size we already fixed up and now we are seeing what happens in this scenario now packet number 0 is the second set of 0 that the receiver is waiting but packet number 0 is the first set 0 that the sender is sending which means the receiver will accept the first set of 0 as second set of 0 and first and, no, and first set of 1 as second set 1 which means all these packets will be accepted but these packets are actually duplicate packets duplicate packets okay so so what did you understand if sender window size is 4 and if the receiver window size is 1 number of sequence numbers of 4 is not going to work it is going to lead to duplicate packets problem now let us say I want you know in order to solve this problem definitely one, one, one solution is to increase the number of sequence numbers. So let us say sender window size is 4 only which means I am talking about go back 4 only sender window size is 4 and now number of sequence numbers available are let us assume 5 not 4. Then let us see what happens in this scenario. Now sender window size they are going to send 0, 1, 2, 3 packets and the next sequence number available is 4 and receiver is initially waiting for 0 now let us say the same thing is happening 0 1 2 3 packets are sent 0 1 2 3 packets are sent and all of them are received in order which means 0 1 2 3 perfect and now they are all being acknowledged either one acknowledgement or many acknowledgements that depends on the timer and assume that all the acknowledgements are lost and now there will be timeout for all the packets at this point at the timeout for packet number 0 what will sender think is that the packet number 0 is lost and therefore the receiver will you know might have discarded all the remaining packets so sender is going to retransmit entire set once again the previous set only the 0 1 2 3 is again the previous set not the new one 0 1 2 3 ok now what happens is at the receiver side it has received 0 1 2 3 and it has consumed it therefore it is going to wait for the next in order packet next in order packet according to the receiver is 4 the reason is now we have sequence numbers 5 so if n equal to 5 I have 0 to 4 5 sequence numbers therefore sender is sending 0 1 2 3 but the receiver is waiting for the fourth packet now what happens is whenever sender rec receiver receives 0 it is going to discard it saying that this is not the packet I am expecting and it is going to discard it discard it discard it so all the duplicate packets will be discarded because it is waiting for a different number 4 but then other other side it will have the timeouts right for 0 1 2 3 and all so it is even after even after discarding it is going to say that I am expecting packet number 5 for all the packets it is going to say that I am expecting packet number sorry 4 so it is going to send the acknowledgement even after discarding the packets so that the sender can understand that oh the sender will understand that 0 1 2 3 have been received so what did we understand from this if sender window size is 4 and receiver window size is 1 then we needed at least 5 sequence numbers so that there will be no problem of duplicate packets the reason why we need at least 5 different sequence numbers is this if the sender window size is 4 and receiver window size is 4 if we have to detect the duplicate packets 
you you should send four sequence numbers here and you should wait for a completely different sequence number here then only you can say that both are different otherwise what happens is if you are sending a sequence number if you are sending four sequence numbers and if you are waiting for one of them then still there is a chance that you know they they can be accepted as a duplicate packet that is why if you are sending four sequence numbers you should wait for a completely different sequence number in order to detect the duplicate packets therefore you cannot use only four sequence numbers you need five sequence numbers in general if the sender window size is n and if the receiver window size is 1 if we have to detect the duplicate packets in go back n then the number of sequence numbers should be you should use n sequence numbers here for all the n packets and you should wait for a different sequence number at the receiver side therefore you need at least n plus 1 sequence numbers in order to detect the uh, duplicate packets in case of go back n so in any protocol in any protocol threading window protocol if sender window size is ws and receiver window size is wr if you have to detect the uh, duplicate packets problem if you should have at least these many sequence numbers at the sender side and you should wait for a completely different set of sequence number at the receiver side in order to detect the duplicate packets therefore always available sequence numbers should be greater than or equal to sender window size plus receiver window size so remember this rule in any protocol in any sliding window protocol if it has to work without any problem always uh, available sequence numbers should be greater than or equal to sender window size plus receiver window size in case of go back n what is sender window size n what is receiver window size 1 therefore we need at least 10 plus 1 sequence numbers to correctly operate any go back n protocol in case of stop and wait what is sender window size 1 what is receiver window size 1 therefore we need at least at least two sequence numbers in order to correctly operate stop and wait right so this is always true for any protocol either sr or go back n or stop and wait available sequence numbers should be greater than or equal to sender window size plus receiver window size okay so we shall see some problems on this let us say in a go back and protocol go back and protocol sender window size is n and receiver window size is 1 then how many sequence numbers do we need n plus 1 right then how many bits do we need in sequence number field the number of bits do we need in sequence number field to generate n plus 1 sequence numbers is log n plus 1 base 2 so this is the number of bits required in sequence number field in order to generate these many sequence numbers right this is one thing and second thing is let us say already sequence numbers are fixed see first question is i'll explain you again we have some questions here question number one is if sender window size is n and receiver window size is 1 then how many sequence numbers do we need in order to correctly operate this sliding window protocol answer is n plus 1 right then how many bits do we need in this sequence number field in order to get n plus 1 sequence numbers so how many bits do we need in sequence number field log n plus 1 base 2 these many sequence numbers do we need and it is a seal and second question is if sequence numbers is already fixed as n which means we have only capital n number of sequence numbers then what is the maximum sender window size we could get and what about the receiver window size if we have only n sequence numbers then i can go for a sender window size as n minus 1 and receiver window size as 1 why the reason is in order to detect the duplicate packets we should give n minus 1 sequence numbers to sender window size and one different sequence number to receiver window size therefore i cannot go for a window size of n or anything greater than n minus 1 i should keep it to a maximum of n minus 1 right so you know in case of let us say if the sequence numbers are 4 then in go back n maximum sender window size is 3 and receiver window size is 1 
in you know in say you know you could either go for send a window size of 2 and receive a window size of 1 this is also fine this is also go back and since we are having sequence numbers as 4 but then you should not go for send a window size as 1 and receive a window size as 1 because 1 1 is nothing but now let's see the third question third type of question they say that the number of bits available in sequence number field is k k number of bits are there then what is the sender window size and receiver window size if i have k number of bits in sequence number field then i get number of sequence numbers as 2 power k if i have k bits in sequence number field then the number of sequence numbers possible is 2 power k in this case sender window size can be 2 power k minus 1 and receiver window size is 1 receiver window size is always fixed in go back end therefore sender window size can be a maximum of 2 power k minus 1 so understand these three models first model is uh, sender window size is given and receiver window size is given given these two numbers what is the minimum number of sequence numbers required minimum number which means you could have even more than this number so minimum number of sequence numbers required is n plus 1 even if you have more than this no problem but at least you have you should have this many then if you have to have these many sequence numbers what should be the uh, minimum number of bits required in sequence number field minimum number of bits required in sequence number field is you are applying log that is first kind of question second kind of question is sequence numbers are already fixed which means you have a limited number of sequence numbers uh, now how many packets can you send in the window if you have already n sequence numbers you cannot send n, n, n packets in one window the reason is you cannot use up all the sequence number in the sender window size you should give a sequence number to receiver window size too therefore you can go for only n minus 1 sequence numbers in the sender window size and in the receiver window side you should you can go for one then the third kind of question is if the number of bits required in sequence number field is k then if the number of bits which are present in sequence number field is already given as k then what about sender window size and receiver window size if we have k bits in the sequence number field the number of sequence numbers we could possibly generate is 2 power k and because of which sender window size could be 2 power k minus 1 if i have 2 power k sequence numbers i cannot go for 2 power k size window i have to decrease it by 1 so that receiver window will get 1 got it so in any case what you should see is sender window size plus receiver window size both of them added together should give the all the sequence numbers or it should be less than or equal to available sequence numbers in this case if you add them up sender window size plus receiver window size if you add them up it is 2 power k and we have 2 power k sequence numbers therefore it is fine and in this case if you add them up sender window size plus receiver window size the total sum is n and the available sequence numbers are n right and in this case if you add them up n plus 1 we have those many sequence numbers which means in any threading window protocol if it has to work properly always remember that sender window size plus receiver window size should be less than or equal to available sequence numbers in future if you come up with any new protocol threading window protocol with your own name now see that this rule is followed so that duplicate packets will always be eliminated right